are growing up in this time and day being told. So I just turned 23, still young but getting old, still asking myself, how in the world am I going to make it on my own? You know, finally figuring out what it means to be grown, but living in a time where we learn to be grown through our phones. Double tapping and behind clapping, drugs and thugs, unreal reality and homosexuality. A time where women are equivalent to a dime or a ten. Where beauty is all about the outside and no longer within. They say, girl, you gonna get paid if you work that pole. You right, but I won't be whole. <laughs> they say, girl, I know you stress. Hit this. No, I'm good. I should be stressed. I'm knocking goals off my list. You see, I'm rooted in faith, and through all my mistakes, I refuse to quit. I aspire to inspire. I'm determined to go higher. I don't need to get lit because my future is brighter. <laughs> and so is yours. So the next time you lose confidence and all your hope is through, take a look at Songs of Solomon 4 and 7, where it says there is no flaw in you. When you've lost your way and messed up again, keep in mind Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, the Lord is with you. He will strengthen you and help you. He will uphold you with the right hand of righteousness. If there's anything I've learned in my 23 years, it's that we can fear nothing, achieve anything, and overcome everything with the light in us. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Hallelujah. I like you, Sunday. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Give God glory. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord in this house today. We thank God for just keeping us. I already had church at 8 o'clock this morning, so I'm a little hype. But it's all good. Hallelujah. Feel good in my sanctified soul. I had to, I hope my shoes don't distract y'all, but I couldn't do it today. Hallelujah. The Lord had made another way. How about that? Hallelujah. I love the Lord on today, and I appreciate him. And when I got in the house of the Lord, this morning, uh, the Lord switched. So I have to shoot from my hip today. Hallelujah. Because I want to talk to the young folk. Hallelujah. I want to talk to the babies. And the reason I can talk to y'all because I'm old now, but I was bad. I was a bad, rebellious little girl. And I wasted a whole lot of time. So if I could help y'all this afternoon not waste a whole lot of time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as humble as we know how. We ask that you look on us right now, that you anoint your word, that you anoint your maid service from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Help me to decrease, O oh God, and you increase in me right now in the name of Jesus. Hide me behind the cross. Help me to speak with simplicity and clarity that the babies may hear. In the name of Jesus, I give you glory and I give you praise now for saving me, God, from myself. I give you glory and I give you honor now, God, from saving me from the hand of destruction. And I thank you now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There's a lot of things that y'all don't know about me that you will know about me if you stick around long enough. Amen. But I want to talk to the young folk that are growing up and making decisions and the little bitty folk that are making a whole lot of mistakes and don't have to because all they have to do is listen. Amen. Amen. So as I was, I was thinking, um, y'all know my oldest son is in the room, and when he was a little boy, I used to smoke. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. And every time he would draw a picture in art, Pastor would always tell me he wasn't my pastor then. He was just my husband. Every time Anthony draw a picture, he draw it with a cigarette. And it would make me so mad when he would say it because I knew that was the example that I was giving him. So first to the parents that are in the room, y'all have to understand that you might come to church, but you have to live at home the way you are at church. Because children are sponges, 
Everything they see, they soak up. Whatever your example is, is what they're going to do. Whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you have a significant other, they're going to watch how you talk to each other. They're going to watch your behaviors. They're going to watch everything about you because you are the first example to them in their lives. That makes sense? So it's one thing to come here and shout and do all the right things and then leave and they watch us bite and devour one another. That scripture is Galatians 5 and 16, where it is not appropriate for us to act one way in here and then go home and exemplify another type of behavior. Amen. If you're cursing, they're going to curse. If you lying, they're going to pick up lying. If you're cheating, they're going to learn to cheat. Amen. Amen. You have to understand, we are the ultimate example. So I always think when my um, children grow up, um, I always say, they say you reap what you sow. So in a lot of things, I'm praying for crop failure. Some things that I did, I don't want my children to repeat that behavior, although that was my example. So I have the power now to pray for crop failure. And sometimes I tell God, have I not reaped enough of what I sow? But God be the judge of that. And so since I feel like my life is lived for the benefit of others, you cannot take it lightly when you are raising children. If you don't honor God, they're not going to honor God. If you don't trust God, they're not going to trust God. They're going to do exactly what they see you doing. And now for all of us little girls and young ladies that think we know best, you really don't. You're not, I'm not talking to you because I read it in a book. I'm talking to you because I live that life. There are so many times that I wish I had the opportunity to really appreciate my mom and daddy. I got saved before they died. That's all good. But all the hell I put them through, I cannot make up for that because they're gone on to be with the Lord. So I'm talking to you to let you know that you can make choices that they are uh, where they celebrate until the, instead of them being in sorrow. Yeah. If we don't get it in the church house, where are they going to get it? Snapchat, social media, Facebook. What y'all don't understand about watching all that garbage, it gets into your spirit. You start wanting to look like them girls and be like them girls and floss like them dudes. But that is a road to destruction. And see, what I see is everybody's on their phone. Nobody's in a book. Nobody's in prayer. You can't get the attention or have a conversation because everybody's head is down. Oh, and y'all don't feel like it's just like the young folks. Some of us, our, 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 us old folks, we surf so hard on the phone till it's embarrassing. We can't put the phone down in church. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Though most of the people that are on social media, it's not even real. You know them cars, they really renting them. You know that jewelry, it's really not real. You know, you can, you, can, you, can, you can gloss over fake jewelry with some clear fingernail polish and make it shine like a real diamond. Don't be fooled by what you see. Move by what you know. Be careful who speaks into your ear gates. Be careful of your eye gates. Your parents are not the enemy. They are on your side. Go real quickly to Ephesians 6 chapter. Hip action, hip action. And what y'all parents have to understand Kids are going to grow up and tell you what they really think about you. They're going to grow up. I, ha I had one of my sons tell me, when I was in Kuwait, you didn't even send me no cookies. I told him, boy, I ain't no mama that mail nothing. Amen. You better get it when you see me. Right. You have to keep it real for them, but still extend love to them. I might not send cookies, but let something happen to you, I'm going to be there. 
Sometimes our children feel like we're against them when we're really for them. They think we really haven't walked the way they're walking now. They don't think we have good sense. So we have to be very strategic how we present to them the truth. You can't be going off and hollering. Sometimes you just have to wait until the cool of the day. Sometimes, like pastor teaches us, you have to wait for them to come down fool's hill and then have a conversation. Y'all have my scripture in Ephesians 6? Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. How many want to live long? Lift your hand. You ready to die? You want to live a long time? Then you're going to have to listen to the folks that you still hear, that's older than you, that you think don't have good sense. They really do. Amen. I just felt like my parents were trying to keep me from something that I wanted to enjoy. I had no idea that they really wanted to keep me from self-destruction. And I thank God for the grace and mercy of God that he put a hedge about me that the enemy could not destroy me. I used to preach early in my ministry, if it had not been for God, I should be dead or in jail. But I'm still here in the land of living by the grace of God. And some of us only want to have relationship with God when we're in trouble. But as parents, we have to pray how to rear our children. You're going to have to go in the bedroom sometimes when they're asleep and they don't even know your presence, and you're going to have to lay hands on them. When they have situations, you're going to have to know enough Bible where you can say, that's in the word let me show you if you don't know the word then you cannot put the word in them the bible told us to raise them in the fear and ammunition of god so we should raise them fearing that if you do certain things it's gonna cost you and some things that happen i can't pray it off you you're just gonna have to go through it you're just gonna have to endure it so first you young folks have to realize your parents are not the enemy I know that you're grown. I know that you think you're grown. I know that your hormones are acting up. But I promise you, if you just wait, you will have less regret. Don't get in a hurry. There is a whole world to see. Travel. Experience life. Husbands can wait. Life can wait. Sex can wait. You don't need drugs to enjoy life. You can have a natural high. How do I know? Because now I operate in a natural high. Don't get in a hurry. I know that boy said you was cute. I know he said he liked your long hair and your pretty eyes. But once he gets what he wants, he won't be passing. He will be passing you in the hall and not even speaking to you. You have to understand that you are valuable at a young age. You don't need anybody to tell you that God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are precious in his sight. Don't let, my pastor said the other, th the other day, don't fall for anything. You have to stand for something. Make them wait. Sanctify yourself. Wait. If he can't feed you, he can't clothe you, he can't house you, he shouldn't be able to have you. If we don't say it in the church, y'all, everybody's talking but the church folk because we old 
and inhibit it? Oh, no, it ain't going down like that. You have to understand that the enemy waits to destroy you. But we feed you the word. We feed you with understanding. What your mama and daddy say may not make sense, but it is for your good. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. I may not have it just right, but if you pray for me and be patient with me and not go off on me and not tell me what I'm not, but begin to tell me who God is calling me to be. We speak things into existence. If you tell me I ain't nothing long enough, I'm going to start believing that I am nothing. If you tell me I'm stupid and I can't get it right long enough, I'm going to buy into that behavior and believe it and start acting like you, what you say I am. I just feel like talking to y'all for a little while. It's important how we operate with one another in the midst of our young folk. What I'm trying to tell y'all is don't settle for the okie doke. The enemy will take you out. There are kids that are missing, that are being snatched from the streets. We live in a city, city where human trafficking is rampant. We do have people that uh, they, 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 they think fast money is good. What you don't understand about fast money is fast money goes fast. You understand? If you have to labor intensively to get what you have, you're more, you're more quick to think about what you're going to do with it when you get it. You understand? So fast money goes fast. If you would wait, God is conditioning you to handle the promises he's made you. But most of the time, we shortcut, and we think we know better, and then we end up in a bad place. And then we have to go back to the cross and say, Lord, help me. And this is, I, I want to say this, we're going to make mistakes. But we don't have to keep making them. We have error correct. How does, the, how does the saint or the young person error correct? You repent. God, I am sorry. Forgive me for my behavior. I shouldn't have done it. Cover me and I won't be found in that place again. Help me, Holy Ghost. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? See, what y'all don't understand, if we're not careful about what we let get into our children's eye gates and ear gates, sometimes we're fighting against things that we're not even aware are there. Some of my, I got two grandsons. So they have technology. You have to be careful with technology. Because they can go on any website with the internet on their phone. So, you know, they tell us to watch the computer, but you got to watch the phone. You got to watch the PlayStation. You got to watch the Game Boy. You have to monitor so they're hearing your message louder than any. Help me, Holy Ghost. We have to structure their environment. We have to make their environment a safe place. So in my house, you just can't come in there and do anything, and I know it, because that's a safe place. The anointing of God dwells there. And many of us are having children, and we are still children. We don't have a clue. Once you bring a, a life into the world, 
Let me school you so you won't be in a hurry. It's no longer about you or what you want to do or coming and going. That life begins, your, that begins your priority. That is your, that begins to be your priority. I believe my daughter-in-law doesn't have a lot of children today because I wasn't no babysitter. Come get your children. I raised mine. You're going to raise yours. When you need my help, I'll help you. But when it's time to come get him, come get him. Now I be secretly praying, Lord, because she get another one? Hallelujah, Jesus. But sometimes we handicap our children. We don't let them suffer from their bad choices. We interfere because, you know, we don't want to see Johnny go through and it's been so bad. And, you know, I didn't do all the right things raising him. I didn't, but I know well now what you need to be doing so you don't repeat the same bad behavior that I had. Clap your hands for Jesus. Go to Deuteronomy 6 and 7. You got to help me this today. Who are, who are the scriptures? Because I. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in the house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and thou risest up. See, a lot of times we talk to them about God, but we don't tell, tell them about the enemy that is trying to destroy them. See, it's good to talk about the Lord, but you have to also let them know that the enemy will destroy you because you've been created with purpose. You're not here just to be cute. You ain't here just to get a man. You're not here just to do what you want to do. You have a God-ordained purpose in the earth. There are lives that you are supposed to impact while you are here. And instead of us being getting ready to do what God calls us to do, most of us are doing what we want to do. Help me, Holy Ghost. You have to teach them to have devotion. You have to teach them how to meditate on the word. You have to teach them how to call on God. You have to let them know you can pray at work. You can pray in the car. You can pray at home. You have to stay in the face of God. So when you're faced with a decision, you can seek the face of the Lord and get an answer. And when you live right as a young person, you're not going to have a whole lot of folks around you. I'm old and don't have a lot of friends. Thank God for my church family. Because the way that I'm going, the Bible says, the way of destruction is a broad way. But they say the way unto righteousness is a narrow way. And few be therein. So when you got a whole lot of folks with you, they calling you on your phone, they on your Facebook, what's up, man? What you doing this evening? You better check yourself. Because a man on a mission don't have a lot of people around him. He finds himself alone a lot of days. Him, God, and his vision. Help me, Holy Ghost. I think about my oldest son. I love him. God knows I love him. He told his daddy, you ain't got but one friend. That's that dog. Well, now you know he got another one. Pastor McFarland. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you're on your way to accomplishing something, folks are not, folks will dog you to get you off path. They'll talk about you to get you off track. You at school, you the only one got your books, you carrying them. Everybody, as you go by, y'all remember when I, was, uh, when I was young in school, you walk by, I hate to walk by a bunch of boys because the first thing they do is, <laughs> you have to know who you are. And when they get to laughing, throw your head back. Because I'm on a journey. You have to realize that God created you not to just be here. And the enemy wants you to abort or slow down the process. Help me, Holy Ghost. 
parents, don't go off. Don't trip. Pray. Yeah, that's right. Ask for a strategy. Yeah. How do I get there? Sometimes you're going to have to take that phone. You got to put it up. You, sometimes you're going to say, okay, you, 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 you can visit a little bit, but not much. You got to pull back on some things. Because when outside influences start having more influence than me and I'm feeding you, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's right. That's you telling me what he said. You telling me what she said. That's a problem. That means you, you, you spin it. It's too much. Com, com, the message is becoming convoluted. Ah, thank you. I want the message to be clear that for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So I can't be serving the Lord in here jumping and shouting with y'all on Sunday and then cussing Aubrey out on Monday. I can't do it. The message is mixed. I go four or five Sundays laying in the bed and they ask me, Mama, is we going? Ain't we going to? You should be up and ready and moving out. Because that is how you show that God is a priority. By the example. If God is your, they need to hear you praying sometimes. Pass by the door and you lost in there. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless this house. Cover them, God. And they walk up. Oh, God. Here she go again. But after a while, when they get between a rock and a hard place. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, when I, was, when I was out in the streets, I'd be praying, Lord, don't let this happen. Lord, don't let nothing happen to my kids. Don't let my house burn down. I was the praying sinner I knew. Do you understand? Because I knew I had no business being where I was and doing what I was doing. And some of y'all just pushed the envelope. Push the envelope, and I'll be at home like, Lord, cover them till they get good sense. Because I don't know why they're trying to get out there what you got in here. Come on. Come on. What? Every good and perfect gift. Come on. Come on. Come on. It comes from above. And cometh down. You looking for stuff outside? You looking for it in another person? I told the ladies on this little phone marriage thing I had got into, thank God he delivered me. I said, we want man, men to do for us what they can't do for themselves. Let me tell you again. We want men to do for us what they can't do for themselves. See, we want them to validate us. Make us feel whole. Yeah. Tell us we pretty. You better get in the mirror and tell yourself, girl, you girl, you looking good. Today. You better learn how to validate yourself. You have to know who God called you to be. Because when you look to somebody else, on a good day, they validate you. And on a bad day, they insult you or leave you wanting. You have to know who you are in God. So for all my babies that feel isolated and feel like you're not a part of the crowd, Mother Robinson came to tell you today it's because you have a special assignment. God has set you aside for his own purpose. You don't want to be like me, have to come out from among them. You don't now have to get among them. I walked away from the church, and I had to walk myself right on back. You don't have to do that. It was a waste of time. I think my name should have a, a, a Ph.D. on the end of it. But some things you sacrifice when you waste time. You don't get everything when you blow it. Don't you believe that? Some things you're going to miss and disqualify yourself. For the things in the earth, you'll make it to heaven. But there's some pleasures you will never enjoy on the earth because you chose something other than what God chose for you. Don't let nobody tell you you just repented and all. No. Some, some things you disqualify yourself from. I want to see some marriages in white. 
See, we don't talk about that stuff no more in the church. You know, you can keep yourself. You just have to give yourself to God. And don't let nobody rub your hands together. Rub your hands together, they get warm. Let it stay asleep. Oh, Lord. Y'all, the streets is telling your children more. That's what y'all don't understand. And they don't even care about them. They don't care about your kids. Let them drop dead or something happen to them. They're going to keep right on going and pervert the next generation. It has to stop now. So we got to be raw in the church now. You got it? I'm through. I just had to talk to my babies for a little while today. I had a good message too. I want to do something a little different. Um, all my um, 